build, maintain, and document a cybersecurity home lab, program, deploy, small-scale, large-scale coding projects, or play CTFs and create a blog and document what you're doing. These are the three project ideas I would recommend you do in cybersecurity. Now you can click off the video. In all seriousness, in an attempt not to repeat what I've mentioned countless times in other career-based videos on this YouTube channel, in today's video, I wanna talk about an overview three big projects that I would recommend you pursue, whether you're beginning, transitioning, or trying to level up your security career. It doesn't really matter what level you are at, whether you are just starting today or exploring the cybersecurity space, or maybe you have a few years experience in this industry. I've done all of these projects in the past to some extent, and as I ramp up a new threat detections engineering project, building out this project, I thought it would be a good idea to overview some projects that I've done in the past, which have helped me grow in this industry. So cybersecurity side projects matter. Why? Well, I'm probably stating the obvious here, but I can come up with a couple of reasons. Well, the main reason I think about it is because it helps you apply the theory you're learning perhaps in a classroom or an online course into something that's hands-on tangible. And maybe you like to add on to that. You personally, uh, you learn by exploring, not knowing what to do, not by just endless amounts of theory or what they call tutorial hell. And maybe the second reason is it's a portfolio project, something that you can point to during an interview or list on a resume, especially if you're a beginner and don't have that experience, you can point to something that shows that perhaps you're a self-starter, someone that is interested in, in building real-world experience. I will quickly overview and scope the three projects, the three big projects I would recommend you do in security. First is building, documenting, and maintaining a cybersecurity home lab. Cybersecurity home labs are quite fun to deploy because really it's completely up to you with what you want to do. Uh, you can create a pen testing home lab where you have perhaps a, an attacker machine and some intentionally vulnerable boxes. You have a detections engineering lab where you build a log management pipeline, a vulnerability management lab, or you, I don't know, do something with a fleet of Docker containers, or you can emulate an entire enterprise network through virtualization. Now, in its basic form, a cybersecurity home lab is a personal, self-contained network environment, typically through virtualization, set up for the purpose of practicing and experimenting with cybersecurity techniques and tools. My first cybersecurity home lab, if you want to call it that, it was basically just two virtual machines being able to ping each other. And from there, I started to emulate a real business network by adding in various components like Windows Desktop, Windows Domain Controller, Linux servers, uh, vulnerability scanners, SEM, EDR tools, and much more. Cybersecurity home labs are, are fun because you get to deploy and tinker around with the various tools. Typically, these are gonna be open source because they're free or have an open licensing model. And you get to really have some experience with some, some enterprise grade uh, security tools. Home labs are something that you can point to during an interview if a recruiter asks what you're doing in your spare time, or you can list it on a resume. It's a portfolio project. Programming, coding, and scripting projects can be quite helpful if you want to understand how the context of programming and more so scripting is used in security. Recently, I've been getting back into writing some small scale projects with Python and learning by researching, writing, and then also copying on Stack Overflow or ChatGPT is very helpful, or it can be. What I've come to learn is it doesn't really matter what the programming project is. It can be a small command and control server or an SSH honeypot, or the project can be much larger, like you're actually contributing towards an established open source project. The programming project idea doesn't have to be original. Uh, it can be something that's been done many times before. Uh, it doesn't have to be large scale. It can just be think about like something that you repeatedly do, or maybe a task that you wish you could have automated, or a program that you wish you had. Uh, it doesn't necessarily also have to be secure related. Uh, programming concepts are just important to know and they translate whether you're in security or not. So basically what I'm saying is go write some code and automate a task. Uh, scripts are used to connect to tools, manage a fleet of endpoints, and there's so much more you can do. And it's just a very beneficial skill to have. So I definitely would recommend poking around with some code, even if you're not in that part of the security industry. Capture the flag or CTFs are thought provoking challenges to help you enhance your skill sets when it comes to attacking various machines. Even if you are a pure red team individual, CTFs can help challenge you in the way that you think, break and solve 
attacker-related challenges. There are many CTF platforms or CTF-style platforms offered to students and professionals with various levels of complexity. Think Pico CTF, Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, Phone Hub, Pwn Labs, the list goes on. These CTF platforms offer a curated guided experience with interacting and learning about various tools in security while enhancing your overall skill sets such as troubleshooting or problem solving. Now you can start with any of these platforms, it really doesn't matter. Read a few write-ups on the various machines to familiarize yourself with the tools or just the environment of how it's set up. And I've learned that there's no shame in reading write-ups. It's good for you to learn that way. After attempting these CTFs for a period of time, for me actually, it takes a couple of months. Uh, I then attempt the, ch the challenges and when I get stuck, uh, I end up looking at the write-up up until that step to learn what to do, and then I try again and proceed forward. Whether you're just beginning in the CTF space, or really even in security, or you've been playing CTFs or doing projects, uh, I do recommend that you create a blog. This can just be a simple WordPress website. It can be hosted on Medium or Substack. Creating a blog and documenting your step-by-step -step approach to these machines or just your projects in general help you with information retention, report writing skills, and documentation skills, which are very important in this industry. So overall, you can create a website, whether it's playing these CTFs, creating some small programming projects, or building out your home lab. I definitely recommend having that as a complement to what you're doing. If you're searching for a list of very small scale projects or maybe uh, a list that can kind of jumpstart your own project journey, I recommend checking out uh, the webpage I have in the description below. It's just a list of project ideas that help you get started with overviews and guides to get you moving forward. Overall, cybersecurity projects are helpful. I've said this many times in the channel before. They help you stay engaged, curious, and implement the theory that you're learning into practical implementation. And as I begin uh, a new project here, uh, that's one that's a little bit more advanced, I thought it would be good just to overview some projects I've done in the past and how they've been helpful in my security career so far. So hopefully you found this useful in some way. If not, you know what to do. And uh, yeah, until the next time, have a good day.